So in this video, we're going to look at adding the sapling generator add-on and creating a basic uh, trunk for a low poly tree. So the first thing we need to do is activate the add-on. So we're going to go up to File, User Preferences. It's going to open up our User Preference window. We want to make sure we go to the Add-ons tab right here. And then in the search bar over here, we're going to search for sapling. That'll bring up the sapling tree generator. And then you need to make sure that this toggle is uh, checked. Once that's done, click Save User Settings and close the user preferences. Now that we've got our add-on activated, we want to add in a tree. So we're going to hit Shift A. And the sapling generators are going to show up under the curve option. All the way down here at the bottom, sapling tree generator. As soon as we add that, you can see that we get a series of curves on our screen. And the trees by default are just a series of curves. We'll be able to generate a mesh from those curves, um, but we're not quite there yet. Over here on the left, you'll see quite a few options for our sapling tree. Usually by default, this will start off on the ge geometry setting. So let's go back there, start there. Um, this first toggle here is the bevel, and this is going to turn on visualization of the mesh that these curves can generate. Just kind of helpful to get a better idea of what the tree is actually going to look like. You can start with this blank tree and build whatever you want. Uh, I found that a good place to start is with a preset. So if you come down here at the bottom left, the presets, you can open that up. And these top three you won't have. These are presets that I've created uh, for some earlier work. For this tutorial, we're going to start with the white birch. We get a uh, tree with a lot of trunk splits, splits and lots of branches. So our primary work here is going to be to cut down the amount of branches and the number of polygons, so to speak. If you look up here at the top, you can see that we've got 82,000 vertices and almost 70,000 faces, way more than we want for a low poly model. So one of the first things we're going to do here is drop down the resolution. This is bevel resolution. We can drop down to one and the curve resolution as well. We can drop down and you can see our vert and face count. It's a little bit healthier. We still have a long ways to go, but it's a good start. Um, on this geometry tab here, there's lots of different settings. Uh, one that's pretty good to look at here is the random seed. So once you get your settings the way you want, you'll be able to save uh, a preset. So you can type in a name here, hit export preset. It says export preset. You're not really exporting it. You're just saving it. Um, I'm sure you can find the file somewhere. Um, once you've got that done, that preset will show up here like mine have. And then you can use this random seed to generate similar trees, um, but with different geometry, and you can get a lot more variety in your game or your render that way. So I'm going to leave that seed at zero. And I'm going to go next to a branch radius. And I found with low poly trees that these really thin spindly branches, while they look good in kind of a realistic sense, they're not what we want for a low poly model. So I'm going to turn that up. Maybe that's, I think, going to be a little too thick. So maybe I'm going to do 0 0.04, bring it down, um, something like that. And we've still got a lot of faces and a lot of vertices. But we're starting to look a little more stylized. You can also play around with the uh, root flare here, and that just flares out the root. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, something like that. I'm going to go to branch splitting next. Now, I found these settings to be uh, a little confusing, um, and there's a lot of interplay between settings. Um, so I'm going to, so the way the, the tree works is you have all these different uh, branches at different levels. And so you have a base level, the next level of splitting, the next level, the next level of splitting. And you can kind of see that, that this big thing here is a trunk and then you go out to a branch and it splits and then that branch goes out and sp splits again. Um, and so that's what we're talking about here with these levels. Um, for our purposes here, we're just going to drop down this um, secondary level here. I'm going to go from 60 to 15. I'm going to get a lot fewer branches. Again, our face count is dropping quickly. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to play around with are these segment splits. 
And if you hover over any of these items, it'll give you some idea of what it's going to do. Um, I'm going to drop this down to maybe 14, something like that. Again, starting to look more and more low poly. I'm going to drop this one as well. And I'm just going to try to... We want it pretty low. Uh, we don't want a ton of branches. I might go a little bit lower still. Something like that, I think. That'll work pretty well for a low poly tree. Uh, it's still got a lot of branches going on, so it's a it's a pretty big tree. Um, but I think that'll look pretty interesting in a in a low poly game or a low poly render. We can look at some of these other options here. You got some branch growth. Um, these will this will affect the length of the branches, kind of the angles that they're turning away from, their curvature. Um, there's a lot of lot of good stuff here. Uh, I think one of the more interesting things here is our variation. We uh, when if you got a zero, um, that means that all the branches of that. Um, that that split are going to be the same. You turn this up higher, you get a little bit more variation. Uh, so we can turn this up a little bit, and you can see that my base branches are getting a little bit more variety. Some of them are longer, some of them are taller. Um, you really just need to explore all the different settings and figure out what you can, what you can create, and what you want to create. Another uh, useful setting here is pruning. Uh, I'm not going to do any pruning with this tree, but you can kind of. Uh, turn the setting on and it's gonna cut your tree down. It's gonna prune it. Um, you can change all the different settings, trim off some stuff. And again, this can be pretty good for low poly as it's going to reduce some of the geometry. For the tree I wanna create, I'm gonna use no pruning. So I'm pretty happy with the settings that I've got right now with the procedural tree. Um, the next step is to turn this tree into an actual mesh. So I'm going to click on the tree and I'm going to hit Alt C and it's going to bring up this convert to and we want to convert to a mesh from a curve. And once I do this, I can't go back and change any of the settings in the sapling. So if you like what you have, make sure you go back and save your preset. For my purposes, I'm just going to convert this to a mesh. So this has now been converted to a mesh. Um, and if we're going to go low poly, we want it to be a flat shaded model. So go up here to your tools or transform and you'll find this option here with the shading. Um, we got smooth and we got flat. If I push flat, I get kind of that traditional low poly or more accurately flat shaded look. I have hard edges. We're starting to look better. Um, if I press Z here, we go into wireframe mode, and you can see we still have a lot of vertices, a lot of faces going on. So we'll try to reduce some of those. Uh, you can see up here again, we already have 2,500 faces for just our trunk, which is going to be pretty hard on our uh, computer if we have a, a large scene in Unity. So we're going to go up here to our modifier. And I traditionally add a displace modifier, but I found that it doesn't really look very good with this. Uh, it already looks pretty good. So we're just going to add a decimate modifier. And this is just going to reduce the number of faces. We're also going to use this to create our LOD models. For now, we can drop this down quite a bit. And just kind of choose, I think maybe about 0.2 is going to work pretty well for what I want. I'm just going to kind of look around, make sure there's not any uh, geometry that kind of just make sure that I didn't get rid of too much geometry, that there's nothing funny going on. OK, so that's looking pretty good. Now our next step is to add some some leaves. So I'm going to hit Shift A, go to Mesh, and I'm going to add an Icosphere. And I'm going to make all my leaves out of the same uh, basic icosphere. I'm just going to duplicate this. Before I duplicate that, I want to add in some modifiers. So I'm going to add in a displace modifier. And I want to add in a new texture. So I'm going to create the new texture. I'm going to go up to the texture tab. And I need to change its type. I generally like the look of the cloud texture. So add that in. And I'm going to go back to the modifier. And I'm going to turn the texture coordinates from local to global. 
And I'm gonna turn the strength to 0.75. And the reason I changed my texture coordinates to global is now when I move it, it is a little bit different. And that way when I duplicate this, each um, set of leaves is gonna be unique. I'm also gonna squish this in the Z direction. So I'm gonna hit S and Z to kind of squish. And then I'm gonna kind of stretch it out and kind of get myself a kind of a flat uh, chunk of leaves. I'm also gonna add a decimate modifier to get rid of the uniformity of my faces. Um, I'm not a big fan of all my faces basically being the sh same shape or same size. So I'm gonna drop this down to, I don't know, close to 0.5, something like that, and play around with that. Now, I'm adding these before I do the duplication, so I don't have to add them um, individually later on. I also want to add in a material, and I'm not going to color it yet, but I'm going to add in a material, I'm just going to call it leaves. Um, and again, I want to do this before I do the duplication to save myself some work later. So I am going to spend a little bit of time arranging some leaves so to speak, and sizing them up. Um, no real need for you to watch me do this in real time. So I will speed up the video at this point and uh, rejoin you when I'm done putting the leaves on. All right, so I've added in all my leaves and I've got a very stylized low poly tree here. Um, if I was gonna do this for um, uh, a production game, I might take a little bit more time to adjust some of my uh, modifiers and adjust the size of my uh, size of my leaves and what have you, but uh, it's a pretty good look. I'm pretty happy with it. So next thing I'm gonna do is add in some color. So I've got my leaves selected here and I'm just going to give this, I'm not going to do anything fancy or too funky here. Just give it a little bit of green, darken it up a little bit. Maybe something like that. Uh, I'm just going to turn down the specular. Not a big fan of specular on low poly models for the most part. There we go. Um, grab my trunk and add a material to that as well. I'll call that very creatively trunk. Turn down the specular. And I'm actually, I kind of like the whitish uh, trunk. Might give it a little bit of gray. You get kind of a Aspen-esque, maybe a birch tree. It's kind of what we started with. Got a white trunk. So we've added in uh, the colors. We've got our tree looking pretty good. In the next video, I will, uh, turn this all into one mesh so that we can export it to um, Unity. We'll also do some baking of the texture so that we get a good, uh, we get good lighting in Unity. So I hope that was helpful. Um, thanks for joining, hope to see you next time.